Plastics only been around since 1945, and in that relatively short span of time, we have generated millions of metric tons of plastic. But over the past 40 years, plastic production has quadrupled, and so has our reliance on single-use plastics, a major contributor to microplastics in the environment. All of that plastic, over time, with the aid of the sun, light, oxygen, microbes, will break them into smaller and smaller pieces. That may take 10 to 20 years for a plastic bag, upwards of 400 years for a plastic bottle, but over time it will break up to what science now call microplastics. Microplastics are defined as any plastic less than 5 mm, and we divide this into two types. The first, primary microplastics, are plastic engineered to be small, and there are many reasons why we do this, like medical, personal, industrial purpose. Watch out for other microplastics in cosmetics, for example, synthetic fibers in mascara. Polystyrene beads are used in many applications as stuffing and flotation, and even things like glitter are considered primary microplastics. Then we have our secondary microplastics, and these are plastics that are created from the breakdown of those large materials. Fragments from a plastic bottle, films from a plastic bag, fibers from netting, from rope, and even from our synthetic clothing. Even though microplastics are so small, they've been shown to be the major component of plastic pollution in the environment. When microplastics exist, in the environment they can be eaten by organisms and then they can make their food chain their way. One study found microplastics in 85% of fish that were collected. They've also been found in other things that we eat regularly too, like salt and sugar, tea bags, meat, alcohol, bottle of water and tap water. Last year, a study came out that showed that microplastics were able to cross the human intestinal barrier. Another study showed that they were present in human placentas. Another study demonstrated that polymers from plastics were detected and quantified in human blood, collected from the general population. It can have physical impacts, blockages, abrasions, or chemical impacts, either from the chemicals in the plastic leaching out or chemical in the environment and contaminants seeking to the plastic themselves. And all of these can create negative health effects, like decreases in growth and reproduction. So we know that microplastics exist in the environment, and we know that organisms and humans are being exposed. So that leads us to wonder, how did they get there and why? Microplastics largely come from the land and from us. When scientists focus their studies on oceans, it's understandable because all plastic that originates on land eventually makes its way to the oceans, the ultimate downstream sink. The way that it gets there is from runoff from land into streams and creeks, to rivers and estuaries, and eventually to the oceans. About 92% of all plastic at the ocean surface is microplastics. There is something that we can do about it uh, almost everywhere we go, and it starts with the good old three R's from the 70s that we're familiar with, reduce, reuse and recycle. But we can add three new R's, starting with the first one, refuse. Refuse single-use plastic, refuse any plastic you don't need, refuse straws, refuse coffee cups, think critically about what you need, think about where airway is. If you can't refuse it, reduce it. Think carefully about the plastic that you need. Find natural alternatives where you can. If you can reduce it, reuse it. Choose products that are built to last rather than those with planet obsolescence. And if you can reuse it, of course, recycle it. But recycling is simply not possible for all the variation of plastic that we have, the composite materials, and the sheer volume that we produce. The second new heart, rethink. We live in a society that doesn't place a high value on second-hand goods. We need to focus on services rather than replacement, and this is going to require the final new heart, which is the most challenging, redesign. On a broader scale, we need to change our thinking from the linear model of make, take and dispose, to one that's more circular in nature, to one which we think about the end life of product right as its beginning. In the circular economy, the one focused on services or repurposing or refurbishing rather than replacing.
plastic is a Bollywood product, we are reliant on it and the future without it is completely unrealistic, but we can't and we shouldn't continue to use it and produce it on the increasing trajectory that we are currently on. We have to remember that change needs to come from every level. Individuals often think that their own actions don't matter as much because they're just one person. But that's simply not true, because we all contribute to the microplastic problem and we can all contribute to the solution.